This um, is a man who spoke at the University of Berkeley just last month, as we told you about. Me, uh, I wouldn't be able to be on stage or be able to have a civil dialogue. They cheered him at the University of um, Berkeley. Um, let's, go to, let's go to the ties here. Um, the ties of... We know he's tied to um, Ahmadinejad. He met with Ahmadinejad, right? In New York City with members of the new Black Panther Party flanking him. Interesting. Um, he went uh, to Libya and Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. Can you tie him to anybody in the administration? We can't directly tie him to anyone in the Obama administration, but Glenn, here is the deal. The Nation of Islam's power base is Chicago. President Obama is a Chicago guy. We can directly tie Louis Farrakhan to President Obama's mentor and father figure, Reverend Wright, the man who married President Obama and baptized his children. He said he found Jesus Christ through Reverend Wright. Yes. And but he didn't listen at church. Not at all. He not was at all. dozing in the pews. Right. He was dozing in the pews. And the audacity of hope, that bestseller of his, is mm -hmm. named after a Reverend Wright sermon. Mm -hmm. That he didn't listen to, but he remembered the name. Absolutely. So Reverend Wright and Louis Farrakhan traveled to Libya together in 1984 and met with Muammar Gaddafi, a terrorist murderer, mm -hmm. anti-American. Mm -hmm. Reverend Wright's magazine, The Trumpet, at his church out in Chicago, honored Farrakhan with a Lifetime Achievement Award a few years ago and had Farrakhan on the cover of the magazine. While Obama was going to church? Uh, that is a good question. I believe it might have been during the campaign. I think right. it was 2008. So at that time, he had disavowed. Right, okay. Reverend Wright. But look, it's six degrees of separation. Not even six degrees of separation, Glenn. It's one. They tr yes. They traveled in the same circles in Chicago. That's indisputable. Reverend Wright, Farrakhan, thick as thieves in Chicago. Tiffany, what did you just, uh, what, what did you say before we went on the um, air, uh, the uh, audio? Do we have the uh, video of this? The Million Man March? Do we have the video of it? Okay. The, the, the Million Man March was, uh, uh, was something that people say, oh, well, you know, that's just, that's just black people coming together. But can you tell me about the Million Man March? First of all, Barack Obama attended it. Yes, he did. And who was in charge of the Million Man March? Well, Farrakhan basically was the main organizer behind the Million Man March, and some of the new Black Panther minions mm -hmm. were involved in organizing the Million Man March. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the, um, the kind of easygoing, laid-back, solidarity, let's to get, get together and sing kumbaya type event that you've been led to believe. And President Obama was at that march. We don't even know if President Obama has ever met Farrakhan face to face. We don't have any information of that sort. But look, again, they traveled in the same circles. Can you imagine anybody going to, um, you know, a KKK rally right. and then actually saying, I just went because it's just important for white men to get together. I wasn't listening to the rhetoric there and, and getting away with it. We're suicidal. Yeah. We're suicidal as people because we don't want to believe that any of this stuff is true. But it's clear. Yeah. Here's another double standard for you when it comes to Farrakhan and just Reverend Wright and all of these guys. Farrakhan has traveled to Sudan and met with the radical Islamic leaders of Sudan who are enslaving black people and right. slaughtering black people in Darfur. Farrakhan has never said a word about that. Modern denies day slavery it. of black people, he denies it. And why does he deny it, Glenn? Because the people doing it are not white. Okay. So let me show you a piece of audio. Did we get the piece of audio uh, or video, Tiffany, from the, the mall? Yeah, okay. Let me show you a piece of audio. And this is something that we actually saved. Um, we had it in our back pocket the whole time um, as we waited for um, uh, 828 because um, uh, Fer uh, um, Sharpton kept threatening and the Black Panthers were the ones that said they were going to show up and they would kill anybody who showed up, remember? And, um, and we had Al Sharpton coming out and saying that I was a bigot and a racist and everything else. And we just held it. We didn't want to get into any kind of war. We just held it in case things got really bad. So I don't even know if we've ever shown this video on TV. But watch this clip. One nation of Islam. One Black Panther Party. One new Black Panther Party. Get one of everything. And tell them, let's build this monument. We express solidarity with Reverend Sharpton and other black leadership who are outraged 
at the attacks taking place against our people all over the country. The point is, is that Al Sharpton has dropped the radical pose, but he's still standing with the absolute radicals, and the radicals will stand with him. So when Al Sharpton goes down, it's just different faces of the same hatred. Mm -hmm. Al Sharpton goes down and says, we're going to take to the streets. The Black Panthers go down and say, we're going to take to the streets. They seem like they are uh, two different people, but yeah. they are not two different. They are, they, they, they co-mingle. Absolutely. Right? And not only is Al Sharpton standing with the new Black Panther Party, He's standing with our attorney general right in Washington so DC. so let's just do this here's the attorney general standing with Al Sharpton Al Sharpton stands with the nation of Islam the nation of Islam stands with Louis Farrakhan yes so and Louis Farrakhan stands with Iran and with the occupiers right and Louis Farrakhan is funding the occupiers the White House and and Barack Obama says the occupiers are great I mean mm -hmm. this is an amazing oh, yeah. situation yeah. An amazing situation. Absolutely. They're emboldened under this administration, number one, because this administration's whole strategy, Glenn, and you, you've said this so eloquently over the months, divide and conquer. Race, gender, class. Divide and conquer. It's exactly what they're doing. It's exactly out of the Alinsky playbook, the Marxist mm -hmm. playbook. And what unites all of these different strains of radicalism, be it occupiers, be it uh, black radicals, even white supremacists, even Sharia-loving jihadists, what unites them? Two things, hatred of capitalism, hatred of Jews. It is the common strain through all of these mo movements. On their face, they seem wildly divergent, but they come together over capitalism and the Jews, and they're going to come together again. Now, you would think that white college students, now remember Farrakhan just went to uh, Berkeley, and um, uh, they loved him in Berkeley. Oh, yeah. um, you'd think that white college students, educated people, would listen to Farrakhan and say, this is nonsense, this is crazy. But who are the ones that are standing in Occupy Wall Street? Remember right. what Eric just said? It is the hatred of Jews and capitalism. That is it's the beginning of time. That's the way it works, especially with Marxists and radicals. And Islam and Marxism fused they fused. I have the literature from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. They fused. Um, it's a Muslim Brotherhood all the way. Oh, all the way. It's social justice. Yeah. So you've got that. And in now, the eyes of the occupiers, Farrakhan is a victim of the white power structure. So you have Farrakhan and Occupy Wall Street, and you don't, you wouldn't think, you wouldn't put those two in the room and say, oh, these two are working together. Here's Louis Farrakhan on Occupy Wall Street. Watch. These are children or young people who are fed up with bailing out banks while I think 16 million homes in America have been foreclosed on. People are hurting. And these young people are expressing themselves. But if, if it gets to the point where America gets tired of the protest of these young people and something happens like what happened at Kent State and young Americans are killed. I tell you that militias in this country that have been training for war against their own government will come out in the streets to protect these children, and it's on. 